to a scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons right back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me tonight, we have Stuart. Hello. We have Amy. Hello. And we have EJ. Somewhere. <laughs> He'll turn up, like he always does. <laughs> He's anyway. in the drive through at the moment. And we apologize for no Hawk. Yeah, and Hawk is once again doing real world things and isn't able to join us in the fun little podcast. So, well, you get that sometimes. Hello, Robert. Nice to see you joining us in the chat room. We shall keep an eye on it. And if there's anything you want to add to the conversation, feel free to join in. On tonight's podcast, we have our top five sci-fi space battles and Falling Skies is finally finished and we're going to give it a bit of a roasting and to see what comes out the other side. I didn't like how they ended it. Yeah. I don't think it tastes very nice. It tastes kind of chewy, like bacon. <laughs> mm, bacon. <laughs> bacon. Anyway, so let's kick it off with our number fives. It, you guys in the chat, if you want to join in, feel free to comment your number five in the chat, and we will read it out for you on the air. So, let's start with Stuart. What is your number five, sir? Uh, my number five is from uh, the Star Trek movie... Uh, as, oh, God, I've completely forgotten the movie now. Uh, Wrath of Khan, uh, USS Enterprise versus the... I can't remember. Miranda, the, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, that is my number five. Oh, nice. Very nice. I was going to go next contact. Because, well, first, I, first contact. First contact. I'll put that in... Um, contact. Next contact. <laughs> La, I am so out of it. I officially, I officially apologize to all Star Trek fans. You may kill, if you want to send a hate mail, please send it to da- Dave at SaveSciFi.com. David at SaveSciFi.com. We'll just kill you in the 12 disclaimer days. is not technically oh. a valid email address, so don't bother <laughs> emailing that thing. Okay. Robert says his number five is Star Trek Into Darkness, the Romulan future ship getting destroyed. Um, I think you mean that's a tad confusing. I think you mean Star Trek the the first one of the reboots where it gets sucked into a black hole. If that is what you mean, just let us know. For me, my number five is Ender's Game, the final battle at the end where they defeat the alien space bug things. So, I thought that was really cool because I just thought it was really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Amy, what's your number five? Um, Mike's a... It's a yay or nay, probably, for... Technically, for a space battle. But SG-1 against the Replicators. SG-1 against the Replicators? You mean, um... Uh, season when... eight reckoning, where they deploy the the device yeah. that wipes them all out. Tries yeah, that, anyway. That's a that's a pretty good, pretty good battle. Yeah, hundreds of hardtacks above a planet shooting the crap out of each other, and Tilks in his hardtack whizzing around. It's like oh god, 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 oh god. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna die. 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 And Mr. Bland acting in front of him. I don't know who <laughs> that actor was, but. Seriously, he no. gives some of the most wooden lines I've ever heard. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, Dragon says, Number five is Alien with Sigourney Weaver, the part where she fights the Xenomorph. Technically a battle that took in that took place in space, but not technically a space battle. So, when we say space you're disqualified. Ba- when we say space battles, Dragon, we mean space. Battles with either mechs or ships. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting guns, explosions in space. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. (laughs) (laughs) You'll think of something else, Dragon. Okay, so EJ 
gracefully gave me his list before disappearing. So his number five is Farscape, Destruction of the Peacekeeper Command Carrier. Um, I honestly can't remember that. It's been a while since I watched. Yeah, I can't remember Farscape. Farscape. <laughs> can't really remember it either. And the, yeah, it's been the, the, the noticeable battle from Farscape that I remember is the one with the wormhole weapon at the end. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. And, I and that speech is one of my favorites. And I don't think that's set. No. I think he might be talking about the time that Talon blew up a um, command carrier. Anyway, moving right along. When he come, when, if and when he joins us, we'll get him to clarify. Moving right along. For me, my number four. So get your number fours ready in the chat. My number four is Albanoa Zero, the final battle over Earth. So the final episode, the final battle between the main good guy and the main sort of bad guy in the series. Um, when it comes to sort of battles, to me, Aldo Zero Mech versus Mech did a fairly decent job um, with their combat, so I was always really pleased. Uh, so, Stuart, what was your number four? Uh, my number four is from Serenity and it is the Alliance versus the Reavers. Oh, yes. the the They come through, so it's like, oh, look at that, he's flying straight at us. Yeah, he's, he's just being a tough guy. Reavers blast through smoke, he's like, well, oh. well, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. It's like, fire, come on, somebody, anybody, fire, please fire. Oh, yep, well, we're screwed. So, yeah, I love that. that that's, a, that's a pretty good one. Um, yes, the Battle of Antarctica is Robert's number four. And, yes, I'm pretty sure EJ agrees. What was EJ's number four? EJ's number four is... The Battle of Antarctica. So, Robert, you and EJ are both on the same wavelength. Same wavelength. Is that dangerous? Yeah. Potentially. Possibly. There could be a feedback loop and like <laughs> destruction. Who knows? Um, Amy, what's your number four? Um, the catcher from Gundam Wing blowing up a colony. Oh, that was brutal. That's, so that sounds painful. So, so uh, for those who haven't watched Gundam, I actually know this because I actually love Gundam Wing. It's my favorite one. He's in this um, Gundam, which may, basically augments you, so you see your own fear, and it control and it takes it over, and he almost and he accidentally kind of blows up an entire colony with with a, with a giant laser. Whoops! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was very guilt ridden for a while. Yeah, sounds like it. Okay, so we've done our number fours. Let's move on to number threes again, chat room. Get ready. Uh, number three, Stuart, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is the sacrifice of the Pegasus from Battlestar Galactica. That is my number three, you bastard. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what it's like. I know, I know. It, th that episode is probably one of my favourite episodes of sci-fi. It's got one oh. of the best... Um, it's got Galactica at its height, jumping into orbit and belly flopping in and dropping the fighters on the way down, which I still think is ridiculous. Even yeah. it's, it's, it's the most absurd thing ever, but it works. And then Galactica's getting its ass kicked and Pegasus rocks up and just wrecks house. <laughs> it's like, sub -lip, sub -lip, big brother, boom! Yeah. And just, just wrecks. Just wrecks everything. Um, and eventually it takes out what? It takes out one with its initial strike and then eventually plows into a second one, destroying it, and its wing thing flies sideways, annihilating another <laughs> base star. Yay, so, we finally got the first Star Wars. Oh, yes. So Robert says his number three is... The Battle of Endor. The Battle of Endor and the destruction of the second Death Star. Death star. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that as number three, just for it's, curiosity. It is one of those iconic yeah, things. It's, it's just one of those iconic moments in sci-fi. Exactly. It's it's definitely right up there. Um, I hope got everything. Gets... You've got lots of big ships shooting at each other. You've got a Super Star Destroyer that magically teleports across to the other side of the planet somehow to crash into <laughs> the Death Star. Still haven't quite worked that out. Yeah, that, that I'm was going bizarre. With it. I'm going with it. Eh, so was a logic. Yeah, pretty much. So, what logic? Um, what's EJ's number three? EJ's number three, the destruction of the alien vessel in Independence Day 4. Specifically the mothership. That chase through that mothership is still one of my favourite things. Where they're just sort of whizzing around and you see all the other alien stuff. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Get away. Mind you, Max hacking into a spaceship. Yeah. I'm glad... Actually, no, I'm not. I'm sad that it... That, that, there's a deleted scene. Put it this way. There's a deleted scene where they explain that the, the, the Max systems are based on the alien software. Like a dumbed-down version of the alien software, which is why the Max system can connect to the alien system. Still think it's bullshit, but at least it's an explanation. So, yeah. Anyway, so number three is done across the board. Um, yeah, I don't have one. You don't have one? I have one, but I can't think of the name of it, so... Fail. So... Oh, it's Macross, actually. Macross. Um, the last battle, the... There was a cyborg that tried to take over the whole world, and she got turned on and got eaten. Oh, that sucks. Okay, then I'm changing my number three, just because Stuart stole it. (laughs) (laughs) My number three is the end of... Oh, wow, I just forgot what it's called. Technoman. The final battle in Technoman in space. Where his body's failing, his mind oh, is yeah. is sort of falling apart, and he still manages to push enough juice out of the suit to to finish the bad guy once and for all. Techno Man's still one of my favourite series, even though you can never find it anywhere. Yeah. It's really good. If you want old, classic, good anime, Techno Man. Anyway. Anyway. Wow, we're flying through this. Surprisingly quickly. So, get ready for number twos in the chat room. We're not getting sidetracked. Yeah, we're not getting sidetracked. That's scary. I blame Scarecrow. Scarecrow's not here. (laughs) That's why we're not getting sidetracked. Scarecrow the sidetrack guy. (laughs) And now EJ, the crazy producer guy. Okay. Is that EJ who just messaged? Um, No, it was too fairy. Um, Sure. So give me a second. EJ is joining the call. There we go. EJ is in the call. Hello, latecomer. Hello, Mr. EJ. Can you hear us? I hear nothing. No, he, no he's, not bl- he's not deafening for once. Yes, EJ is nice and clear. How what? Was, how was the drive through sir? <laughs> Where's my super uh, It was annoying. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and we threw you under the bus again. I don't know why you keep coming back. You must like getting run over by buses. What can no, I just, say? Just I'm face it. like that. <laughs> so we have made our way, and I've been covering your list for you. We're already at number two. Ah, okay. So the only but question we have... But did you argue for my number one, number one very well? We haven't got to number one yet. We oh, started at number five, five and backwards. worked, worked hey number one. You. So we, did you argue for Farscape Destruction of the Peacekeeper Carrier very well? We weren't exactly sure what you meant. I was just about to say, what was that in reference to exactly? Was it the Wormhole Weapon one, or was it one of the other things? It's been a while since I've no, actually watched Farscape. No, I think Farscape. it's season... I think it was like the season... Th- Three finale, where um, Talon, uh, Talon yeah, warped himself or not warped or, or went into slip uh, slip starburst, starburst, starburst. Thank you while inside the carrier and caused it to collapse around him, yeah, giving a, a peacekeeper women and children time to get off while you know while still dealing with the wormhole threat. Yeah, yeah, I, that was my sort of second guess as to what you were referencing. So yeah. Woohoo, I was right. Victory! <laughs> oh, your second guess, anyway. Yeah. Well, it was either the wormhole weapon, which I still think is one of the best sort of moments in any sci fi series, is the wormhole weapon sort of going off and everyone just sort of realizing how much of a bad idea that thing is. And, um, yeah, the second choice was the Talon jumping from inside the ship. So, anyway, let's move on to number two. Number two. Number two. My number two was one of Stuart's ones, I think it was. The End of Serenity. Was that somebody else's? I can't remember. No, that was mine. That was yeah, yours? The, yeah. The Alliance versus the Reavers. Yeah. Yeah, it was The End of Serenity when the, the Alliance versus the Reavers. So I might have to change my number two. Thanks, Stuart. Again. <laughs> okay, I've got a new number two already. I thought of it just, just right this minute. Um, 
in the original original Transformers first episode when the Decepticons are fighting the Autobots. Jeez, that's going a fair way back. You... <laughs> I have watched it, but jeez, that's going a fair way back. It just, just jumped into my mind, so just to fill the void, there it is, number two. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> I, I was half expecting you were going to go the Unicron movie, to be honest. Yeah, the, the Unicron battle was pretty good, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have no <laughs> idea what the hell you're talking about. The original Gen 1 animated Transformers, animated Transformers uh, original the pilot 1980s. episode. So. Wow, I thought I was a nerd. <laughs> The only yeah, reason but... I thought of it is because it's sitting on the shelf right next to me, and I just sort of looked at it and went, eh, I'll <laughs> go with it. <laughs> so that makes sense. I'll go with it. So, yeah. I needed to fill a slot, and I filled a slot. <sighs> yeah, oh. I'm pretty sure that uh, Michael Bay has ruined Transformers for me forever, so. Yeah. yeah. Which is why I've got the original series on DVD handy for whenever I need, whenever I need an inoculation. <laughs> I'm not commenting on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least now we know what he uses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll, I'll actually I'll do a serious number two. The Battle of the Lucre Hulk in episode one of Star Wars. <gasps> oh, and um... All other things aside, that was still pretty cool. Yes. So. Oh, are you talking about that big battle over Coruscant? No, 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 over... Um, in the Cat first... Movie Tatooine. over Tatooine. Naboo, Naboo, Naboo. Uh, oh, 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 Naboo. When, Naboo. when, uh, when, oh, when Jake Lloyd is like dives into the the middle of the damn tra- uh, yeah. um, yeah. trade federation. Now this is part racing. That one, yes. Yeah. Oh, you're line retarded. Is horribly haunting. <laughs> so just tormenting EJ. That's what I do. That's why I'm glad he's here. It's been I mean, boring up until now. The Twenty minutes in, it's finally getting fun. Cool. That line is just horrendous. Yeah. Should, should you tell them what my first top five was like? Oh yeah, it was just Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek, and I said, "Dude, you can only have one Star Trek." And you went, "No, I want all." Of them. <laughs> <laughs> you want the Pretty Star much. Trek's in mind. I must have no. them all. And I was like, "No, I no." Response was in not so kind language. F you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, I got told I have to stay in space. So, yeah. Okay, anyway, we've made exactly zero progress on number two. So yeah. we'll go with Roberts. Number two, uh, Borg. For, uh, the Borg cube fight in First Contact, um, which I'm pretty sure is somebody's number one. No. no. And I thought it was EJ's number one. It's called the Battle of Sector 001, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's EJ for you. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, anyway, um, Stuart, what's your number two? Uh, my number two, I'm going anime on this, is the final battle for Mobile Suit Gun- uh, Gundam Seed. Base, so basically, um, Earth is facing off against uh, a subnetically enhanced uh, human race. Zord, uh, Zord, uh, I give up. Zord. Yeah. Don't worry. Ignore Amy. She's Amy, getting confused. Amy is confused and lost and probably in a totally different conversation right now. <laughs> yeah. No, and, no, um, actually. <laughs> basically, um, they, they, all, they, they, were, they banned oh, nuclear that. weapons in this, but by the end of the battle, they're all, everyone's just using nuclear weapons <laughs> to shoot from one end of the galaxy to the other. Oh, well, that's one hell of a warp drive. <laughs> Yeah, basically one sh- one of one of no, and this is this isn't ships by the way. This is a laser that shoots from one end of the galaxy to Earth to blow it up. Well, that puts the Death Star to shame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. By the way, just real quick correction. Robert's comment was not the Battle of Sector Zero Zero One. It was the Battle of War something or other. EJ, go Battle of War something. Three five nine. Good That's point. the one. Good yep. point. It was numbers, I just couldn't remember what numbers they were, and to be perfectly honest, 359 was nowhere near the top of the list. <laughs> uh, no, that was the name of the planet that they were, or, or, or the system that they were battling in. Yeah. And they lost 40, I just watched it recently, they lost something like 40 vessels, 40 yeah. starships. Yes. And, and then only a couple of years exactly. later in Deep Space Nine, they'd like tripled the size of the fleet to hundreds of vessels. That's like, no, yeah. they didn't. 
this is what happens when you piss off the Federation. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the later battles in DS9. Yeah, the later battles in Deep Space Nine where they have the okay, massive Okay, I think you're talking about, like, because they, they revisit the Battle of Wolf 359 in the uh, pilot episode of DS9, and I thought you were talking about, like, there was hundreds. No. It's like, no, there weren't. No. No. Yeah, um, Sacrifice of Angels Season 6, I think, is what you're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember that. It's been a while since I've watched it, and I don't think I've actually watched Deep Space Nine. I struggled to watch okay. it. Okay, hey, card revoked. Sorry, Nerd yeah. card revoked. Yeah, well, you get that. I'm the host, you can't have it. Mine. My precious. <laughs> Wrong. We're launched in fact. Yeah. Anyway, um... So who hasn't done number two? Amy. Um, yeah. Amy, do you have any more, just out of curiosity, or do you just have a four and a five? <laughs> no, I have two more. <laughs> two more. Go for it. Um, the last battle on 007. Uh, eh? Don't, uh, skip me on number two. I've got number one. Okay, we'll go with that. Amy's number two is skip it. <laughs> Never heard of that? I'll have to check it out. <laughs> Sorry, it's another musical one. Uh, okay. Dancing Girls. Okay, just definitely nah. skipping that. Nope. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our number ones. My number I haven't one. done number two. You haven't done number two yet? I thought you did number two. Oh. Huh. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it's my number four anyway. Eh? Okay, okay, come... okay, okay. We already covered so... your list, DJ. We we did we did oh, the, we've done the, we, we 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 did five fast get destruction of peace keep carried we did four battle over Antarctica we did three destruction of the alien vessel from Independence Day we have not done two or one yet oh okay never mind <laughs> so if you want to cover your two and I actually agree with that that is actually a pretty good point um go right ahead and cover what your number two is. All right, Babylon 5, victory over the Shadows slash Vorlons at the um, middle to end of uh, Season 4. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, must right? Be, one, of, one of my favorite battles from Babylon 5 isn't actually that one. It's the one where the Earth ships are threatening to blow up uh, Babylon 5 during the Civil War. And the oh, Mimbari, that's a great one. And the Mimbari ships rock up, and she's like, only one captain has stood against a Minbari warship and survived. He stands beside me. Where do you want to be? It, it's just... not beside me. It's behind me. That's, yeah, I was close. <laughs> As if I've already conquered that son of a bitch, so you want to go against me now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at which point the ships go, ah, 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 turn around and run. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Which kind of makes me feel sad. Which kind of makes me question why Earth is one of the major four federations. Yeah, it's not. And why Earth has a seat on the damn Security Council. Yeah. Well, uh, I think Earth has numbers. What what it lacks in power just makes up for in sheer numbers. They're sort of like the Wraith in Stargate Atlantis. Technically, their ships aren't that strong on paper, but because they've got a kajillion of the damn things. It sort of makes up for it. Yeah, no, because it's like our ships in Babylon 5 are so underpowered compared to everything else that's out there. Like every single, like even the minor, uh, uh, minor species in the League of Non-Aligned Worlds can't do, or I'm sorry, could completely, like you could have a fucking frigate go up against one of our battleships and we're dead. Yeah, okay. It, it, it's just like like they have artificial gravity. They they don't need rotating sections. They fucking got like beam weapons that would destroy the shit out of us. It doesn't make sense that we would be one of the main four federations. And as far as numbers concern are concerned, we just had our ass handed to us a decade prior by the Minbari. I'm sorry. That's a fair point, actually. But we a, a decade is not enough time to build enough numbers in order to compete with anyone. Well, think of it this way. Maybe Earth in this is like Australia in the, U, the United Nations Security Council. Completely useless? With a little kid at the table going, Oh, pick me, pick me, pick me! And everyone else is like, No, Australia, sit down, go in the corner. No, you're not allowed at the big boys' table. <laughs> let, let the United but States and China deal, and Russia deal with this. 
go sit over there. But I want to help. No. But it would be <laughs> it would be more like if Australia had China's place at the UN. Yeah, it's a fair it point. Makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. My number one is it's probably still one of my favorite ones. I actually watched it again the other day. Is the battle over Asurus in Stargate Atlantis? It's the replicators have been pushed back to their home world or have fallen back technically to their home world. We've brought a ragtag fleet of Earth, Wraith, and Traveller ships together and have come down to sort of lay down the law, take out as many ships as they can to prevent them from escaping and blow up the whole damn planet. Because when you're dealing with nanites, the best thing to do is use a bigger explosion, apparently. What, let a bear be I mean... at it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll I mean, right you now. destroy one star... And everybody's blaming you for it for the rest of your life. Yep. <laughs> there. Okay. Um, Robert's <laughs> number one, just really quick, is the ba- the species 8472 battles the Borg in the Delta Quadrant and 8472 blows up planets. Yeah, that's... that's you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> imagine, imagine 8472 versus the Wraith. Like, the Wraith trying to feed on them. That'd just be hilarious. Actually, Why, they can't die. Actually, weren't they a silicon-based life form? So no, that's that's the the Vorta in the original series. Ah, I couldn't remember. I thought, yeah, I was going to say spe- species eight four seven two versus alien silica life form versus silica life form. Let's see what happens. Considering the fact that the that eight four seven two can kind of like organically assimilate you, yeah. as some with Ensign Kim. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they would wipe out Alien. Yeah. The, or the we'd xenomorph. end up with some insane bastardized Xenomorph 842 hybrid that, th- that spits acid because reasons. Well, no, because the 8472's version of like uh, what I meant by assimilation is like, take you over, but it, it eventually leads to death. So like all they have to do is scratch you and leave a few cells in your body, yeah. and eventually you're going to I, whereas the xenomorph has to actually outright kill you. Yeah. But it has acid blood, so it makes it a little bit easier, and incredibly not fair for us. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, don't think it cares about fairness. Yeah. Yeah, but look at look where we got the, the actual military involved in Aliens. Yeah. Um, how many xenomorphs they took out compared to how many actual marines they had. That's a fair point. It's a numbers game, people. It's a numbers game. Yeah. Hey, hello, Mojo. Thank you for joining us. It's nice to see you. Like the never? Uh, so, Stuart, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is from Star Wars. No surprise. But it is not any of the Death Star battles. Ooh. It is the opening from Episode 3, the Battle of Coruscant. Yeah. See, that still that doesn't make any sense to me that that battle would A, happen, B, that they'd be allowed to get close enough to get the Emperor away and onto one of their ships. To me, <laughs> that, that should be red flags, left, right, and center, that something, something hinky's in the wind. <laughs> and yes, I did say hinky, damn it. <laughs> I know, but when I think about, when I, when I look over the Star Wars battles, I think, which one really got me pumped? And it's just like, I always go back to it. Because yeah. it's like it is one of the most kick-ass opening scenes to a movie you will ever see. Oh yeah, it's following the fighters down and through, and the best part is it proves that the fighters it... don't have shields that stop solid objects because exactly. the robots land straight on the hull. So yeah. screw you and your X-wing have shields bullshit. Which means photon torpedoes would make it through the shields, and guess what? Bye bye. Star Wars, Star Trek wins. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I hate Star Trek. And that's okay, that's okay. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, I'm just, he's just, I'll get all the way. I just got plasma beam weapon. Bye-bye, galaxy class. Uh, uh, uh really? Really? <laughs> really? It cuts you straight... pretty much just described a phaser. It cut through an Ori mothership shield, the most powerful, well, one of the most powerful shields in the series, in two hits. It's Oh, okay, now give me evidence that phasers or photon torpedoes or quantum torpedoes are not equally as powerful. I think we found our topic two for. I think we found our other topic two for tonight. 
Yeah, we, we could just ditch. We could just ditch uh, falling stars and just let you two go at it for the rest of the night. <laughs> My job's done. First start track. Hmm. Uh, I say, I say, I say, Starcade have the better characters. Yeah, so, and the better crossovers. Well, we'd still love to see Roman versus Wolf. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. So, okay, anyway, number ones. Uh, Amy, what's your number one since you finally decided that you actually have a number one? <laughs> I had a number one from the start. You just didn't have it. You had a number four, a number five, no three, or no two, and then a number one. No, I had... That's, um, that's, that's great counting skills there, Amy. Great counting skills. Actually, I didn't even have a... No I only had a number one or a num and a number two, which you couldn't pronounce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See now, in, this is why we have Hawk. Yeah, just let him let him do the tongue twisters and then laugh at him when he fails. <laughs> okay, it's from Gundam C. When yep. the Archangel's leaving Heliopolis, and um, it's all exploding behind them. Yeah, that's pretty good. Because they self-destructed. Yep. Very nice. Um, for those who don't know what Heliopolis is, it's a colony in space. No, it's no, it's actually meant to be on Earth, isn't it? That one's on Earth. Oh, oh is that Earth? Is... Oh, yeah, no, that is Earth. My mistake. Technically, Earth is in space, <laughs> if you want to look at a technical side. Actually, but and but still, you're still fired. Supposedly, that makes peaceful and not do violence. Wait, why am I fired? Because you are. Because I, I got it wrong, yeah. <laughs> hey, I at least kept my balance to space, Amy. <laughs> They're going into space. Yeah, hers are pretty much all mech battles anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah. So, so why no Gurren Lagann? Really? 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 Gur if you're going to be all mech battles, Gurren Lagann, where they have freaking mechas fighting each other, the size of, of universes, thro using galaxies as throwing stars at each other. Because I haven't actually watched that one yet. Ooh, that sounds incredibly that terrifying to me. Never... Gurren Lagann is amazing. So... I have to talk about it. Here's my anime. That. And I think I just gave away the ending. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. Anyway, um, so what is your number one, EJ, since I think you're the last one to go? I am a leaf on the wind. Watch how I soar. So, the Battle of Sector 001 it is. <laughs> yes, actually, I just wanted to say that because I threw you off. Um, yes, Battle of Sector 001 uh, just because it's fucking awesome. And honestly, for me, it made a huge impact because as a kid, it was the first time I saw Starfleet actually making sacrifices in order to accomplish a goal. Because, I mean, the number of ships they lost in that battle and still won. And even even when they are victorious and the board ship is, is exploding, if you pay attention, you see ships, like Starfleet ships, trying to get away and getting caught in the explosion and dying. Yeah. And, I don't and know, you also, me, if you hey, also watch really, really closely, you can, you can see the Millennium Falcon in that battle. Y y yeah, no. You can. It's in the background. What? You... I've seen that movie like a trillion times. Where? <laughs> you have it's, it's one of the most well-known Easter eggs in that movie is the Millennium Falcon in the background. Oh, I'm so linking you to the video after this. Please, please. Yeah. And, and, and you'll have to like make me reject, like renounce one of my favorite films for being tainted by that 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 war tardiness. <laughs> By the way, I actually do like Star Wars. I just have a hell of a lot of fun with the rivalry. Yeah. Yeah. See, so, it's, 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 the whole sci-fi rivalry thing is effectively Star Wars and Star Trek throwing crap at each other. Stargate and Babylon 5 is sitting at the back shrugging their shoulders going, we'll just wait and see who loses and join in there. Are you, just... kidding? Are you kidding me? Babylon 5 fans hate, well, what few of them are left nowadays hate Star Trek, especially DS9, because DS9 was basically ripped off from B5. Yeah, because the Babylon 5 creator took it to Star Trek first, they knocked it back, and then coincidentally launched this almost identical show only a couple of years later. Pretty much. Yeah. So, that is actually a fair point that I forgot. Either way, the Stargate fans are still sitting on the side just sort of getting drunk and laughing. Oh, <laughs> this is Battlestar 
Metallica fans who are like sitting on the sidelines smoking cigarettes and eh, I'm gonna go cut myself and and do some other fun things. Yeah, the, the, we at Safe Sci-Fi do not condone the actions of cutting oneself. Please do not do that. Oh, no, I'm not need to do that. Please yeah. contact someone professional. Far more yeah, professional please. than we ever are. <laughs> I'm just talking about how B BSG is just so slit your wrists. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Take no, I am not condoning slitting your wrists. Takes a little while. It, it does have its really cool moments, though. Like, it's oh, almost, it's almost sure. worth watching for the really cool moments. Uh, the final, the battle at the the final battle at the end of Battlestar Galactica, it would be on my honorable mentions list for battles where the Galactica is getting its ass reamed by the colony ship. You see crack breaking off left, right, and center, and yeah. The season season three, I think it was the season three finale when uh, when Pegasus was destroyed. That was uh, that, that was, was that was season three, episode four. Really? That far? Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah, because well, we actually, that was on my list. That's, oh, okay. that, that's actually one of my favorite episodes of sci fi, period. <laughs> it ain't bad. It ain't bad. So, yeah. Um, another honorable mention would be The Battle Above Earth from the start of Halo 2. Oh. And you just see the human ships just getting annihilated, and Master Chief's like, yeah, I'm just going to take it back there, bomb, jumps out of the. Jumps out of the Cairo station, and just casually falls in, sets the timer, flies away, lands on the outside of a ship. It's, it's all fine. It's fine. <laughs> now, I saw my like, favorite thing from Halo has to be Johnson is like, "You're a crazy fool. One day you're gonna learn something that's not gonna that's gonna stick in you and not come out." No, um, no. Uh, the line is, um, "One day you're gonna crash into something as stubborn as you are." Oh, stubborn as you are. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that's, that's like, the start yeah, of Halo Three. Three. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Considering the planet Earth was not as stubborn as he was, he 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 might have some trouble seeing that prediction come to reality. <laughs> yeah. unless, unless he lands on Cortana. Yeah. Another cool battle from Halo is actually in the game where the frigate takes on the Covenant Corvette in Halo Reach. One of my favorite. Oh, levels. is that the um, is that the is that the um the space mission? Yeah. Yeah. That was so much fun. <laughs> I actually had so much fun playing that. I was like, yay, finally! A space mission. Another sci-fi... Sorry, just saw something cool. I'll, I'll say it in the news. Okay. Um, another cool honourable mention would be the Battle of the Citadel from Mass Effect. Well, that was that was pretty broken. That was a battle. Stuart? Yeah. Yeah, Battle of the Citadel. I'm giving yeah. it a shout out for you. And I know. You're meant to be saying things and you're Mass not. Mass Effect. Love Mass Effect. Can't wait for Andromeda. You're Hurry stuck. up. Hurry up and bring out Andromeda. So, so anyway, have we all done our number ones? Yep. yep. Anyone in the chat want to throw out a, a number one just for shits and giggles? Just, I'll, I'll give you guys 10, 15 seconds while we just say crap. For a while. <laughs> 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 yeah. Your call is important to us. Please hold. He <laughs> <laughs> has thought of what one. Mm. No, that wouldn't work. So, what, yeah. Another. Um, I'm just trying to do the space battles. Like another sort of hilarious moment in um, Stargate is the battle where the replicator ship gets annihilated by the Asgard and just like falls down on the planet. And they're just like, we couldn't contain all the blocks. It's like, well, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's like, That's nice, we, we turned a sun into a black hole to kill these damn things, and they're not dead. Shit. <laughs> so do oh. it again. <laughs> Sorry, oh, we don't have any spare stargates to throw at them. Yeah, see, I would have gone the car around and just blown the damn sun up. It's like, you want to do it right, just blow the sun up. Problem solved. And then make MacGyver jokes. Yeah, lots of MacGyver jokes. Um, let's see what else. Excuse me, oh, excuse me. MacGyver, another black hole sun in ten seconds. Okay. Yeah. Um, another battle which I really should have thought of before now, and I apologize for forgetting until now because it's also one of my favorites. Is the Battle of the Ori Supergate at the end of season nine of SG One, Camelot. Um, that is the Ori rock up and. I'll be back just, in a sec. Absolutely wipe the floor with us. 
If only they had the Enterprise there. Yeah, sure. You betcha. <laughs> bye bye, Ori. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that pretty much does it with the. Unless anyone else has got some honorable mentions. No? No. Nope. Alright. That's the honorable mentions done. So. Get everything Star Wars on the list? Um. <laughs> We do. Yeah, we did enough Star Wars. We called the two major ones was Death Star and Battle of Coruscant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think mean, all those as, as contenders. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, overall, I think we covered pretty much everything. So, so it's about time we moved on to the Falling Skies finale. So. Uh... Sorry, our missing host just called me. Uh, <laughs> tell him to get his ass on the podcast. Can't. He's at work. That's boring. Anyway, um... And I have, like, nothing to say, considering I I haven't been watching Falling Skies. Yeah, I well, saw half of the second episode in, uh, uh, of the first season, and that is it. Well, nice to see EJ can contribute. <laughs> that is my contribution to Falling Skies. <laughs> I watched half of the second episode of the first season, and it didn't make any sense, and now it's gone. Pretty much. You pretty much described my perspective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I would go a step further. Now it's gone, and I, I, I don't really care. Hmm. Eh. Uh, well, just a really quick overview. Basically, what happened was Earth got invaded, everything got destroyed. Um, the last sort of scattered remnants of humans are sort of scavenging for food, trying to survive. The kids are getting abducted and turned into skitters, which are like bug people multiple leg things um there's plot holes left right and center that people keep falling into and some characters just vanish without a trace for no apparent reason um it's like every other post-apocalyptic show out there yes pretty much yeah um eventually we rise up against the aliens form a militia work out how to try and take down the mechs which um we only just managed to sort of pull off once and then we realized that if we melt the mech metal down and turn the mech metal into bullets then we can shoot the mechs and kill the mechs because apparently all you need to penetrate armor is that metal melted down which considering we don't know what it's made of means we don't know what the heat is to melt it yeah pretty much you don't exactly know how hot the damn thing has to be to melt it let alone have the resources available to breach that temperature to melt it so, well, that one you could figure out through trial and error. That doesn't bother me. Yeah, eventually you could figure it out. Um, you then f they then form a militia, follow who they follow a school teacher, and then sort of scurry around the country for a few seasons. Eventually, they reach the point where they've got contact with all of the other militias, thanks to another alien that turned up out of the blue, um, and decided to be friends with them, and they then go to sort of full-on war against what's left of the Asfeni, which are the bad guys. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Asfeni. They, they uh, take, the, take the war to them for a change, push them back to Washington, and then the finale happened. And all of this setup, which made the finale seem like it was going to be epic, just, it just went to crap. It's like, it felt like three episodes sort of got deleted chunks stitched together. And then they sort of went, yeah, we'll iron out the differences as we go. That sound fair to you, Stuart? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It was, overall, it was the, like the very, very end of the episode, I felt like was a good sort of way to sort of bookmark the end of the series. Sort of like Iron Man, Tony Stark, throwing the arc reactor into the ocean at the end of Iron Man 3 felt like a good way to sort of bookmark the end of his character. Yeah. His character's story arc. But oh, that the came moments, back in the movie. The, the moments that sort of led up to that, though, just like Iron Man 3, was made hell. almost no fucking sense whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> they blow up all the zillions of dollars of suits. So, yeah. Well, no, they didn't do that. Yeah, well... That was being Stark. Yeah. yeah. So the, what happened was they had all these militias attacking the capital. Um, to try and draw the Asfeni soldiers away from their queen, because apparently they have a queen, which was just randomly introduced out of the blue. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, by the way, they've got a queen now. And they're like, but, but what? Like, yeah, they've got a queen. Huh? And um, 
So, and at the end of the last season, it was teased that this is new, even bigger, badder threat coming. And at the start of this season, it's revealed that that bigger, badder threat isn't... Isn't coming? No, no, just isn't big and bad a threat. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger, bad threat is a mouse? Pretty much. It turns <laughs> out to be one alien on a mothership under the ocean with sort of stupidly advanced technology. And effectively, Ex Machina is a weapon for them to stick to the Queen, which blows the Queen up, and then everything, Jedi, you know, uh, Star Wars Episode 1s, and all of the Isfeni troops explode. Oh, really? Yeah. I have no interest in watching this show now. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, you don't have to, it's over. Yeah, it's, it's done. Yeah, yeah, but I, I have no interest in, like, going back and trying to watch it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, each season felt so separate to the previous season that it almost felt like a different show with the same characters. Yeah, it's just, I know, it, it, was... it started off strong, but then it's, it's sad. It started off good. So and then it went to crap for like two seasons. Then it went good again for a little bit. And like it had moments in each season where it was sort of decent. But for the most part, it was crap. Crap. I hate to say it, it was. It was average at best. It and sounds like there's like no leadership at the top. No yeah. no vision no, for where it was going. And that's what it, that's definitely what it felt like. It felt mm. like a, they only had one season at a time. So they were telling the story in one season arcs. So at the end of each season, they sort of went, well, shit, we've got another season. What are we going to do? I know this. Well, shit, we're at the end of another season. What are we going to do? I know this. And it was, it just felt very sort of, very dysfunctional. And overall, it's it's all right. But it's not something I'm going to go out of my way to watch again. Not like Battlestar Galactica, not like Stargate, not like Babylon 5. I will, it's I not Star Trek is what it. you're saying. Yeah. And I wouldn't go out of my way to watch Star Trek either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to come over there and kick your ass. I don't care <laughs> 5,000 miles away. <laughs> I'm sorry, but over here we use kilometers, like most of the rest of the world. We don't measure things in pigs. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not going to fault you for being like the rest of the world and being pinche pendejos. <laughs> <laughs> and for all the like non-Spanish speakers out there... Fucking dumbasses. <laughs> Just because kilometers is logical and makes sense and is like based on a scale of 10 doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so, it's just so easy. It's like, it's like prodding something. You know it's going to bite you, but you just keep doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, these bites hurt, motherfucker. <laughs> Dead or alive, you're coming with me, punk. <laughs> Hey, you bet you'll buy that for a dollar. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, next. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, okay, put it this way. Over, overall, as a series, I'd give it... I'm feeling slightly generous tonight, so I'll give it a six and a half. Oh, wow, you are being generous. I'm giving it a, I'm giving it a five. Out of ten. Um... The ending brings it down, but it does have its moments, and you do eventually get sort of attached to the characters as sporadic as they are. Um, yeah. But at the same time, there is a sort of a unkillable factor which does come back later on in the series, to sort of especially right near the end. Like I think the most, I think the best part about the ending of the series wasn't the battle with the queen. It so was... it's ended. <laughs> no, no, no. It was the battle with. Um, the biker guy. What's his face? Oh, him, yeah. Yeah. I've forgotten his name. He's, he's constantly yeah, screaming at Mason. Yeah, um, I've forgotten his name as well. Don't worry. Oh, that's Man, if, if Michael was here, he would kill us right now. Oh, yeah. He really would. Pope. 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 Yes. Yes, Pope. Um, Pope going sort of off the deep end because his um, love interest dies and he blames Mason because no matter what happens, Mason and... Mason's kids never die, yeah. so he just sort of goes loopy. And at the end of the episode, he sort of yeah, it's, it's it's really cool. It's done. That is done really well. So I'll give it extra points for that. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I I I'm sticking with the five. It was, it started strong, but it just it, it just got terrible writing towards the end of it. So yeah, it started off strong and it just got more and more mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Well, 
Based on what you're all saying, I think I'm going to go ahead and agree with the 6.5 out of 100. That makes, or actually, out of, out of 500. Out of, out, of, out of 10, AJ. Out of 10, not out of 100. Gosh. Oh! <laughs> well, not that okay. So 6.5 out of 500. Okay, got it. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> so, Dragon says that they rate it 6 out of 10. So. That's proving that I am right, and six out of ten is the right number. Eh, six uh, out of that ten. just proves you're you're like everyone else who uses kilometers and are a dumbass. Sure. <laughs> well, he's EJ's right about the dumbass part, but. Mm. <laughs> you, can you see me disagreeing with the dumbass part? Just saying. <laughs> so anyway, it's about time that we moved on to the, the news. news. Yeah. So. So first, now... first, just before Stuart gets started, I'm sorry, Stuart, you can do your news in two seconds. There is whispers that there will be an, out- an announcement on next week's podcast. I can't say any more than that. Huh? So, see, none of these other guys even know about it. It's something that only I know about. But there will of be course, because an... you're the host. Of course, I know, see, I know, I know all the cool behind the scenes stuff. So, you know what this means, right? Oh, oh. So, make right. sure you tune in next week for what should be an intriguing announcement. So, anyway, I literally could not say more than that. Stuart, news, go. News. Yep. So, first off, before the news, well, I will do a shout-out. Yes. Uh, the Magnificent Raiders of Dimension War 1. Uh, they have an Indiegogo um, up at the, mon- uh, at the moment. <laughs> wow, my words are just not working tonight. EJ, you broke, Stuart. Great work. We need you on it the podcast. It wasn't we hard. The- we need you on the podcast more often. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so, um, He's the war right? I'm the what? Wartard. Yes. 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 Yeah, you were already broken then. I didn't have to do much. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's in, it in, in a future in a, um in the dark age after a cataclysmic war. Um, they want the they wanted to get uh fifty five thousand for their um funding. Yeah. At um, the moment, they're they're one hundred sixty five bucks. Well, so we want to help them get across the line, like we try and do to support different sci-fi projects. So uh, this one was pointed out to us by Aaron on the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page. So if, you have a pro- if you're out there and you have a project that you want shouted out on the podcast, just send us a message and we'll do our best. So let's do it. News, go. Yeah. Uh, so if you're wondering why I was making noises earlier, I can now reveal what it was. EB has Star Wars themed... I really don't um... want to hear your noises anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. know you can call me in the middle of the night to tell me your noises, but really, I'm not interested. <laughs> oh, it was really funny. We, we're talking about something and just out of nowhere, we hear Stuart go, <laughs> we're like, like <gasps> Oh, what? The Star Wars things? That's nothing <laughs> new. No, 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 no. Not the, not the, Force, not the Force Friday toys. Uh, EB Games have Star Wars Episode 7 Xbox One controllers. Ooh. You can get a <laughs> cap- you can get a Captain Phasma, a Kylo Ren, a Stormtrooper, a Starfighter, and a BB-8. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I, I'd rather sit on a hot spike. Yes. I can take it. That can also be arranged. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's it's your ass. <laughs> yeah, moving along to some interesting Flash news. Yeah. We g- potentially Professor uh, Zoom could could already uh, could not be Hunter Solomon. Ooh, there could ne- there could be um a third. Uh, there's another version of um of Zoom in Jay Garrick's Earth Two mm-hmm. called um Edward Claris, who who uses blue lightning, or um or his when he runs he has blue lightning since we yeah. see a blue lightning runner in the trailer. Yeah. So a lot of people are speculating that he could be Zoom or it will be Hunter Solman as well. Ooh, very interesting. So a little, little tidbit of that. Uh, Arrow Season 4 trailer dropped. Don't really care. Yeah, I'm sort of over Arrow. It's made well, a similar say- mistake to what Falling Skies did, where it sort of did seasonal story arcs with no real... Connection? Sort of, Long term sort of plan. Yeah. Although I will say so. the arrow suit does look awesome. Yeah, the arrow suit looks awesome, and oh, yeah. the, the, the trailer itself's all right. You need to, you really Although, need to look it up and check it out. But I really hate 
Diggle's helmet. Yeah, it looks like King Magneto's. It's just... Ugly. No, sorry, no, Dred's. Stop that um, Dred's helmet. Yeah, it's just ugly. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just like they've found some recycled metal and put it together and the helmet was like, there, here you go. Yeah. It was like, blog. Nothing... Yes, we were talking about Flash. Did you want me to repeat it? AJ just linked us to a YouTube video, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, Flash! Ah! Ah! Oh, Master of the Force! I love Flash Gordon. Yeah, for those who are wondering, what was for all of those wondering that was linked, EJ linked the Flash Gordon theme song. That's why we all started doing it at the same time. <laughs> Anyway, Stuart, news. News, yep. Uh, I think there's one. Not more. if I can distract you long enough. <laughs> um, we had um, I'll, I'll announce it. Um, the cruiser for our ultimate sci-fi enemy fleet was the Imperial uh, Death uh, Star Destroyer. The Imperial yeah. Death Star Destroyer. Just, just... <laughs> Stuart, you're fired. Just I'm don't even try. I'm the worst part of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get Star Wars right. Something's clearly wrong. <laughs> yeah, Star, Star Wars. Star Wars guy screws up Star Wars. That, that should be a new banner somewhere. <laughs> Stuart, the Star Wars guy that screws up Star, Star Wars, Wars stuff. I guess I'm, I'm not... always make one. That's why I win every argument. Yeah, I might as well cover Force Friday. Um, that happened over the, over the week. Um, over Friday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they a couple of cool things came out. Some new, some awesome Lego stuff. So some Lego Tie Fighters and new X, new um, X Wings, Millennium Falcons and stuff. That remote control Millennium Falcon is sexy as I the love drone. It. Yeah, the yeah. drone's cool. Uh, there is a, there are two versions of a, of a remote control BB-8. There is one that actually has remote control up, which is this is a, this is US dollars, not Australian dollars. So it's eighty US dollars. That's about one hundred and thirty Australian dollars. Yeah. The what the other one is smaller, but it has an app and it can talk and and you can control and talk to and stuff. It is two hundred and fifty Australian dollars. No, our sucks. I wanted one until I saw the price tag. I'm like, nah, nope, 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 nope. Well, I've already I've already got an R two that wanders around my lounge room whenever I turn it on. It just like, casually wanders around and whistles. It follows you and stuff. So I might get BB eighty eight. So he's got a friend. <laughs> Oh, how sweet. Your retarded androids can, like, you know, mate or something. <laughs> yes. I, I come out in the morning and my Zoids are alive. I'm like, uh, well, the... <laughs> Sorry, have you been watching too much Toy Story? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is at least Data was able to speak English. Hey, three people can speak English. Most of the time. Yeah, but he also looked like a retard. That's true. He, he didn't look like Sheldon at all. <laughs> oh, wow. Short spine, a big bang theory. Ooh. Oh, boy. You were going to get some hate for that one. Oh, yeah. And all hate mail can be delivered to. <laughs> <laughs> Michael at SaveSciFi.com. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, that might actually be a legit email address. I don't know. Oops. <laughs> said that. Well, you've done bad when the spam is trashing you, okay? Uh, so, yeah. anyway, anyway, we've got about a minute left, so Stuart, you better make it really quick. Uh, that's it for news. There's really nothing. Oh, Oz Comic Con news. Uh, a couple of new guests: um, Ivana Lynch, who's Luna Lovegood in Harry Potter. Yep. And uh, Harry Potter's father I from when he was. So he waste the rest of his time. About it. Exactly. <laughs> and, and we lost one. Damn, we lost a couple of people. Oh well. Yeah, we lost a few. <laughs> yeah, okay. what is can anyway. I just so he loses the rest of his time. Yeah. Anyway, we lost I was just seen it. <laughs> anyway, I was just playing the, the intro track for the outro by accident, so <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Okay. Anyway, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Bye all. Bye all. Oh, goodness. Goodbye. Uh, everyone. And for those who stay by, you get a really special announcement. We are moving the podcast. More details to come later. Rash. 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 Rash.